The bevel modifier allows us to add bevels to the edges of an object without modifying the mesh itself. This is known as non-destructive modeling, or the non-destructive workflow. It's called non-destructive because the modifier can be turned on and off at will or modified without actually changing the mesh underneath your object. Under the bevel modifier, we can change the amount of bevel, the number of edges in a bevel, and the limit method. The width type has to do with how the bevel is measured. Take a look at these diagrams for a quick explanation of which does what. The limit method determines which angles get a bevel, or which edges get a bevel. Angle, as you guessed it, is determined by the angle you set here. So anything above this number gets a bevel applied to it. You can see that changing in the viewport now. 30 is the default. Another commonly used method is the weight method. You can see in this model I have weighted some of the edges. That is determined here under edge data. A mean bevel weight of 1 means that that edge will be beveled the full amount that is set in amount. While the limit method is set to weight, only the marked edges will have a bevel applied to them, as you can see here. We can always add more. The last method is vertex group. This would determine which edges to be beveled by which ones belong to a particular vertex group. So if we change it to vertex group, you would select your group here, which you've created already. Under profile, there are two different methods to determine the profile of the bevel. Super ellipse is the default. The number under shape determines how much of a bevel or what direction the bevel faces. So going to zero would be an inverted bevel, which you could change kind of a curve on the interior. 0.5 is the default and most used. The other profile type is custom, and you would determine the shape of your bevel using this curve. Now you're generally going to need a lot more segments in order to display the shape that you have determined. The geometry section under the bevel modifier has to do with our corners and edges and how they are handled. The outer and inner miter has to do with the way corners intersect. For instance, sharp is the default, but if we were to change to patch, you'll see that the corners are handled slightly differently. Arc is still different, and the inner and outer have to do with inner and outer corners. For instance, if I change the inner to arc, you'll see that these corners are arced on their intersections. This is more obvious if I were to turn the amount of segments up. If you were to add a subdivision surface modifier to this and change shading to smooth, you might see some shading uh, anomalies. So if we were to change this to be very narrow, you'll see that some things just don't look right around some of these, these corners. And changing the miter method will often solve most of these problems. Intersections has to do with the outer corners. Are they filled over or do they just cut off? So a grid fill is the default. Cut off doesn't look obvious here, but let's say we take off our subdivision surface and go back to flat shading. You'll see that these bevels kind of meet and they cut off, just like the option says. If you find that some of your bevels are overlapping each other, you'll want to turn on clamp overlap. You'll see that it's on by default, and right now, when I turn the bevel up higher than what can physically be done, it stops. But if we turn off clamp overlap, they can actually go right over each other. This can be useful if you're using the angle method for beveling and you have a very procedural model. Uh, it will be limited by the smallest bevel in the, in the model, and you might not know where that is. So turning off clamp overlap will let you work more freely, and then you can fix the errors later. The loop slide option, when turned on on a more complex mesh than this, will keep your bevels more uniform. Uh, it'll, it'll slide these bevels along your existing edges. If you were to turn on auto smoothing, you'll see that there are a number of options within this modifier that affect shading. So under the shading portion here, we can harden normals or choose not to. We can also choose to mark any beveled seam as 
a UV seam by checking this box or mark them as sharp as well. So those you'll have to experiment with depending on what your shading is looking like on every particular model that you're using. You'll find the number of modifiers are able to use different material indexes or indices. Uh, this will allow the beveled section to have a different material than the rest of the model uh, by choosing which material index number is set here. How do you determine what material index number corresponds to which material? Well, that's pretty simple actually. Negative one is simply the default and that is automatic. In my experience, that is the same as zero. Let's head on over to the materials tab and you'll see that there are three materials assigned to this object. If we go into material preview, you'll see that material zero is what I have assigned and since these are not assigned to anything, in the mesh, they're not showing up. However, you'll see that I named them 0, 1, and 2. So let's remember those numbers and come back here to the modifier tab. If we were to change this to 0, our bevels are still the first material in the stack. If we change this to 1, it corresponds with the next one, to the next one, so on and so forth, depending how many materials you have in your material stack. There is one more option under the shading section, and that is face strength. This has to do with weighted normals, and that is to be used in conjunction with the weighted normals modifier that can be found here. And one thing that we may have overlooked right here in the beginning at the top is the ability to bevel vertices or edges. By default, it's edges. Vertices is an option, however, I'm not sure where that has a use. If you have a use case in which beveling vertices is useful to you, please comment down below. I have never run into a situation where I wanted to do this. However, there it is. There are a few common scenarios in which your bevel might not be working the way you expect it. Uh, number one is to look for vertices that are not connected. If we tab into edit mode on this, and turn off our subdivision surface. We can see that there's some strange shading here going on even without the subdivision surface. And looking at the vertices, you can uh, move them around and see that uh, here they are not uh, connecting up. What you can do to solve that is if there is just one section, one instance, select one of the vertices and then select the one that is in the correct position and hit M for merge and you can say merge at last. However, if you have more than one vertice that is not meeting up, such as this section here, there should be a bevel along here, but there isn't. That is because this entire row of edges is not connected. One quick way to solve all vertices that are overlapping and not connected is to select all vertices and hit space or F3, whichever is your search, and merge by distance. That is right here. Merging by distance will take all vertices that are closer than this number and merge them together at their center. Another scenario you might run into is this sort of thing. You know your geometry is just fine, but you, do, you have these weird shading artifacts all over the place. You'll want to check your normals. The way to do that is to go to overlays and turn on face orientation. Blue is the outer side of a face, red is the inside. They should all be facing the same direction. A quick way to fix this, uh, you could select one face, Alt-N, and select Flip, and that will put it in the right direction. However, if you have a bunch of this going on all over the place, you don't want to just select every face and do that. You can select all faces and hit Shift-N to recalculate normals. Problem solved. And there it is, you have mastered the bevel modifier. As always, if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. I'm Carl with Blender Forge. Happy blending.